Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode on this YouTube channel. And today on this episode, this gadget. This is a small digital oscilloscope and I'm going to explain FM synthesis to you using this. So, let's go! Okay, but let's talk about some frequency modulation terms first. And the first word you hear when talking about FM synthesis is operator. And an operator basically is an oscillator like a subtractive synthesizer, but you can chain the operators to modulate each other. And then the first operator in your chain will be called the carrier. It creates the basic sound and all other operators in your chain are called modulators because they take this basic sound and do something with them in order to achieve a certain sound. And on any given FM synthesizer, the chain or the order in which your operators are chained is called algorithm. And there are many different algorithms on your FM synthesizer and they can be processed in parallel or they can be chained one after the other. And all of this makes it possible to achieve very different sounds. Let's have a look at that. On the Reface DX there are 12 algorithms in total. Let's have a look at three of them. This is the first algorithm and as you can see operator 1 is the carrier and its signal then gets modulated by operator 2 and then the resulting signal gets modulated by operator 3 and then by 4 and the result of all this is then sent to the effects section. In this example, operator 1 is modulated by operator 2 and operator 3 is modulated by operator 4, creating two branches. The resulting sound of both branches is mixed or layered and then sent to the effects section. This algorithm has no modulation at all. Instead, a mix of the output of all the four operators is sent to the effects section. So basically, when all of your operators are in parallel to each other, uh, yeah, then you can use your FM synthesizer in fashion comparable to your subtractive synth. For example, you can use the four operators parallel layout of, on the Reface DX to create a super saw sound. And one thing you also have to know about is that the volume or amplitude of your modulators or your operators which modulate the carry signal will result in big differences in sound. If you just modulate your basic signal just a tiny little bit with the oscillators this will of course sound vastly different to a very strong modulation. So, let's have a look at that. And the last thing you have to know about is the ratio of the operators. When you have your carry signal, and you chain it to another operator, then the ratio just describes the difference in frequency between the carry signal and the operator. And um, uh, the modulator, please excuse me. <laughs> because um, when you modulate your base signal with a lower frequency, this will of course sound vastly different from a um, modulator running at a higher frequency. Basically, you can say that um, using a higher frequency on the modulator will result in a more bell-like sound. So, let's have a look at that. Thank you. 
Okay, I've just connected this oscilloscope to the headphone jack of my Reface DX and now we're playing some sound, you can see it works. And now let's begin by initializing the sound so that we have a pure sine wave on the output. And one thing we immediately can see here is that playing an octave higher just means that the frequency is doubling. You can see that by counting the peaks and valleys on the display here. I've also set up my Korg Nano control to adjust the volume of the Reface DX4 operators individually. Note how the sine wave gets larger as I increase the first operator's volume. Now watch the graph on the oscilloscope as I bring up operator 2, which is chained to operator 1 as a modulator. The sine wave is slowly transforming into a saw wave. The saw wave gets spikier and thus richer in overtones as I add operator 3 and 4 into the mix. Note, the modulators are pitched at the same level as the carrier operator. Well, at this point I noticed there's something off, because just adding up sine waves, or using sine waves to modulate each other, just doesn't add up to this shape we're seeing here. This will not result in a saw wave, and I'm going to show this to you using some mathematics. This is the standard sine wave, f of x is equal to sen x. We can transform the sine wave to our needs by multiplying its different parts with different factors. For example, you can change the amplitude of the sine wave by multiplying the whole function by 3. We can change the sine wave's frequency by multiplying x with a factor of, for example, 2. And finally, we can change the wave's phase, which is the position on the x-axis, by adding a number to x. For example, if we add pi, then we will invert the sine wave. Now let's have a look at our setup again. In this example, all four operators are running at the same frequency. So, in theory, adding up two operators should result in a louder volume and nothing else. But, it turns out um, we get a saw wave, and we could theoretically achieve this by adding up two different functions, as shown in this example. But that's clearly not the case here. So what's going on here? Well, as it turns out, in reality, the synthesizer is modulating the phase of the sine wave. So in our example, let's exchange pi by another sine function and see what happens. And now in the substitute function, let's replace pi again by another sine function. And that looks quite like the wave we are looking for, and that is the reason why frequency modulation synthesis should really be called phase modulation synthesis. Okay, next let's have a look at what happens when we double all the other modulators ratio. As you've probably guessed, the result is a square wave. Okay, now we've seen we can create saw waves and square waves just by modulating sine waves. But it would be a waste of operator power just to create these basic shapes with four or more operators. So the solution for this is feedback. Feedback means that you can take one operator and basically root it into itself multiple times until you get the desired square or saw wave shape. Let's have a look at that.
Well, and as you've probably guessed, you can use this function to recreate something like filter sweeps or um, yeah, any filter related operations on your sound. Well, and that's it for today. I hope you liked this video, and if you did so, please subscribe to this channel. And I have more interesting stuff coming up in the next weeks. For example, my in-depth look at the Yamaha AN200, which is a virtual analog groove box from the early 2000s, or a look at the V machine, which is a standalone VST player also from the early 2000s, and uh, please also check out my cooperation with a YouTuber named Hannah Warren. She released a song on Facebook some time ago and I asked her if I could add some synth tracks to that. And you can see the result on her channel, which uh, should appear in a link now in this video. <laughs> okay, and uh, for now, thanks for watching and have a good new year of 2019 and see you next week. Bye bye.